Do you think a full-blown civil war in 1947 would have been far better, a far better option than the creation of Pakistan and the subsequent wars, rifts, riots, etc. that we have had? That's a great question. So how do we approach uh, this issue? Do we have any historical precedents? So, so think about it this way. In the United States, they've had a lot of presidents, right? And they don't have any official father of the nation kind of figure. But the one person who comes closest to the father of the nation for the American people is Abraham Lincoln. And he is also considered to be their greatest president. He is the one person, I mean, U.S. presidents have, no, have are known to have done all kinds of nasty things. But among all of the U.S. presidents, he is the one person who is uh, reputed as a, as a person of great integrity. He is the one who comes closest to being a saint. So I'm talking about Abraham Lincoln over here. So... In 1861, Abraham Lincoln was faced with the same question, partition or civil war, the same option that Mohandas Gandhi had in the 1940s. And what option did, uh, so what happened was that the uh, southern states in the United States has, had seceded from the nation. They had declared their independence. So the United States uh, was, was basically on the brink of a de facto partition. That's what was happening. So Abraham Lincoln had two options, either allow the partition to happen, allow the South to go its own way, or go to war and have a civil war in the United States. And what option did he take? He chose to go to war. The civil war happened under his watch, correct? And we know the history. The, the North won. They were able to uh, retain a united United States, they were, uh, they were able to prevent the fragmentation of the nation. And history would have been very different if Abraham Lincoln had allowed the country to be partitioned, right? So it is because of these actions and these decisions that he took and the decision to, the very difficult decision to go to war, it is because of all of these actions of his that he is regarded as the greatest president and he is regarded almost as a saint and in some way as a de facto father of the nation if anyone can come close to that title in the US. Now in India, we consider Mohandas Gandhi to be the father of the nation, but he's actually the father of Pakistan. He allowed the fragmentation of India. He oversaw the fragmentation of India. He kept saying that partition will happen over my dead body. But he, his words went in one direction, his actions went in the opposite direction. He facilitated the partition of India. He did nothing to prevent the partition of India. Words and actions are meaningless. It's only uh, words and uh, words are meaningless. Slogans are meaningless. Your actions are the only thing that matter. And action can also be a lack of action, in the as in the case of Mohandas Gandhi. So we had the partition of India without consulting the people of India. It was never put to a vote. There was never a referendum. There was no constitution of India at the time which would prefer, which would prevent a referendum. So there would there, there was definitely the option of go of having a referendum and asking the people of India whether they wanted, whether they were willing to give up land their ancestral land, which has been part of India for thousands of years. So the democratic option was never exercised. Mohandas Gandhi did not believe in democracy and the country was broken up. And what happened next is we know what happened. We have been at, uh, at war with Pakistan ever since. It's sometimes an open war, sometimes an undeclared war. Usually it's proxy warfare and terrorism from, from Pakistan's side. And India just sits there and takes it. And now the war, I mean, the both sides, both sides have nuclear weapons. So it's a nuclear armed civil war, essentially. So this is a continuation of the civil war. Gandhi said that I want to prevent violence. Well, to prevent violence in 47, he ensured there will be violence until 2020 and, uh, and further. So I think that there are times when there are just causes for warfare. There are times when violence is called for. In the Mahabharata, Lord Krishna tried his best to negotiate a settlement and prevent the war. And when everything failed, he exhorted Arjuna and both and, and his side to go to war. This is a just war. Forget about uh, everything that happened in the past. You have to do what you have to do. Just do your duty. That's it. So that's the thing. I mean, this, this, uh, 
this obsession with averting violence at all costs itself is a form of greater violence because it 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 prolongs the conflict over an extended period of time people who were not born in 90, 1947 are still bearing the brunt of mohandas gandhi's actions and the actions of other people in the in the so called indian independence movement the so called leaders so whom did these people really serve is the question we know that the british wanted to fragment india it was on their agenda jinnah was just a pawn and so was mohandas gandhi who was a larger pawn so the partition is what the british wanted they knew that they had to leave india anyway there was nothing left to extract from india india was destitute it was impoverished all the wealth had been extracted away the british did not want to govern a country that was in such shambles which they had brought into such shambles so they wanted an exit strategy and the exit strategy was to break india up into pieces and then play the pieces against one another one another so that they it will give them a geopolitical advantage in the gulf region in which they still had substantial interests because of oil and, and uh, because of the because we know that there was so much oil over there and they wanted to keep extracting that and keep benefiting from from that and they also had uh, substantial possessions in the middle east at the time so they wanted india and part india and pakistan to be part partitioned they wanted the pakistanis to be beholden to the british so that they would keep uh, playing a geopolitical role in britain's favor if india had been uh, had been allowed to remain undivided it would have been antagonistic to the british most conceivably under a united leadership so they ensured that they transferred power to people of their choice india's independence india's first prime minister was not elected he was selected right mr uh, the great great shri jawaharlal nehru so this is what happened independence was actually not it was a transfer of power from one set of crooks to another set of crooks and and so that's the answer would a full blown civil war in 47 have been better conceivably yes finish it off once and for all right whatever issues are left behind from the tumultuous history of partition uh, of, of of the british occupation and the previous turkic occupation all that deal with it once and for all and move on after that instead of prolonging it and uh, and moving it forward to slice by slice cut by cut blow by blow as it's happening right now so this matter is still unresolved this so called violence that gandhi hoped to avert it's still going on it has taken the form of at least four major wars and so much bloodshed has happened because of pro proxy warfare and what not in the pakistani occupation of balochistan and kashmir parts of kashmir and parts of uh, of the pashtun territories and sindh it's brutal it's oppressive and this is what the british engineered and this is what the so called great leaders of india's independence movement facilitated so i think it would have been better for india to have dealt with the matter once and for all in 1947 instead of prolonging it unnecessarily and pointlessly like it's been done right now